Join with me. Word of God speak. I'm finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard. But to hear what you would say, word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know the joy in this place, please let me stay and rest. In your holiness, word of God speak. I'm finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise. All that I need is to be with you. And, and in the, the quiet, quiet hear your voice where God speak would you pour down like rain washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holy Come, let us sing for joy. Joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care.
You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. you are here today. Welcome to Harbor of Joy, those of you that are here, and those of you that are viewing from wherever you are from, across the lands on Zoom. Good to have you joining us today as well. I do want to let you know that uh, the winner of the chili, the great chili cook-off, was not Dean Ramsey. (laughs) And Dean's not, oh, he is here. But I know he'll have something you'd like to say about that. Dean, anything you want to say? I thought he was supposed to sing a song or play the jingling sticks. Well, I'll tell you what, I should for everybody that voted against me. I should. That, that, that sounds like a lot of gas to me. <laughs> well, Dean wanted write in votes. People that have gone south, I said, nope, they have to be here. They cannot vote unless they are here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the hanging chat. Yeah. Oh, you wanted a recount? Well, we'll we'll do it again and uh, see what happens uh, next year when we have a big cook-off. And uh, Dean will probably stand behind his pot or his crock, letting you know which one uh, is his. That's Dean's brother. Mm-hmm. He passed away last night. Mm. Sorry to hear about that, Dean. Um, I forgot what I was going to say after you said that. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll do it again here next year, and uh, we'll probably have some different rules at that time as well, but we'll make sure that Dean does not win again. <laughs> but we rejoice, and we hope that you can, you can uh, gather with us for coffee after church today and uh, you know, celebrate his loss. Some of the other uh, announcements that are in your bulletin here today... I just want to show that Marlene Johnson is here with us. She's been dealing with some things uh, with the doctor and is at home getting better with some medication. On the 1st of December, she will have some surgery down at Spencer as well. But we're glad to see you this morning, Marlene and Elwood. Glad that you could be here. And then there's Marlene, um, not Marilyn. I've been calling her Marilyn, but it's Marlene Van Hove who is here today too. And she's been struggling with stuff over the last little while too, but it's good to have you here, Marlene. You know, good to have you here. And uh, Chuck, I know that you're out there somewhere sitting in an easy chair, but uh, we miss you. And I know you'd be here if you could. And Steve, I see you're here. 
All right. You got anything you want to say? Just wait. Yeah, but the people on Zoom can't. We do it. We do it for people on Zoom. I'm not as important as a chili cook-off, I'm sure, but <laughs> I just want to thank people for their prayers uh, for our auction because despite the fact that what I call the heavy hitters, the big money people, none, none of them showed up. We made more money than we've ever made. So uh, a real blessing. And uh, yeah, I slipped on the ice last night, so you can pray that my uh, face will heal up, but I'm lucky I didn't break anything. <laughs> I'd have to find a doctor who could fix me. <laughs> well, just turn around and look at the camera and wave. Oh, you know, that's Steve Meyer. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> it's always good to have you here. We never know when you're going to come in. I said, you know, he's like the Holy Spirit. He just, you know, he's like the wind in Iowa. You never know when it's going to show up and when it's not, but he's here. And we're thankful for that, thankful every time you can come. Just want to let you know that this coming week, what's going on on Thursday? Oh, yes, there is. Thanksgiving time. How many are going to be gone? Raise your hand. All right. Well, we're still going to have a Thanksgiving Eve service on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, Pastor Rick Porter, who is my neighbor across the street, he, some of you know who he is. I mean, he's going to be here bringing the message to us. And, but I'll be here as well just to lead the service, just let you know that. So some of you are going to go like, well, why can't you do it, Pastor? I go like, well, it's always good to hear a different voice every now and then. And after all, I mean, Rick Porter is, is struggling with being retired. And we've got to let him know that he's not someone you just put on the shelf and forget about. We st he's still needed. So I just kind of invited him to uh, come and speak to us on, on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here at Harbor of Joy, and you are more than welcome. Bring your, if you've got any family that comes, you can sure bring them as well. It'll be a great time together. I do want to remind you that uh, on, the f on the 7th of December, I believe it is, the Joy Us Kids, the Joy Kids and the Joy Us Kids, they're going to have a, a supper for them, as well as a little Christmas program. And we were wondering if there was anyone here that would like to put together little, little bags to hand out to the kids after that Christmas program. If that's something you'd like to help with, uh, see me, and uh, we'll figure out a time and a date where that will work the best and uh, go from there. But, we have uh, a thriving grant to pay for the, everything that goes in the bag. Yeah, everything will be here. It's just we need someone to put what is brought here to put it in a little bag and to give it to the kids. That's kind of where we're looking at things. But yeah, that's a great thing. And uh, just to let you know that Christmas decorating, a week from today there should be a Christmas tree up here lit up. We're in the week of Advent. We start Advent the Sunday right after Thanksgiving. So uh, if you are kind of the decorating kind of a person that likes to put up the nativity scene outside, or you like to work inside where it's nice and warm, you, you would be um, very much needed uh, this coming week as well. I don't, know if you've, I don't think you've got this in your bulletin, but we start next Sunday with the blessing box, and it's kind of like in alphabetical order. You know, you've got to find what your name starts with, and you can bring that item, and you can put it in a shopping cart that's out near the secretary's window in the foyer, uh, starting next uh, next Sunday, uh, we'll, we'll have we'll have these in the bulletin. Uh, maybe there's some already made. There's uh, a bunch of them back there on the table. Okay. And there's some of them in the okay. narthex as well. All right, so you can pick one of those up unless you forgot what uh, you need to bring. It goes along with this little sheet, and and I just reassure you that it's so we're so thankful for Dave Reef and for John Arthur for taking care of the blessing box, and uh, they're mindful of it's winter, it's going to be cold type of a thing, but there's some meats, some meats that are in little packages that you can put out there still and they will not freeze. So just kind of keep that in mind, and there's a little thing on the bottom here that in the winter months, right down on the bottom, those are some things that you could bring if you'd like to share that way. But there could be a gift card, if you want to give a gift card, there's an envelope out there as well that you can give to the blessing box. So. 
That's a great ministry that's taking place, and it is being used a lot. Via de Cristo, that is a, uh, a very important kind of a retreat that's going to be in January. It's just men only the first week, and then women only the following week, and there's reasons for that. And I'm sworn to secrecy. that I can't tell you everything that goes on there. We've been there. My wife and I have been there. And uh, if you're interested, I just say, uh, let me know, and we'll kind of go from there. Or let, uh, maybe I should ask, who here has been to Vio de Cristo? Why don't you just uh, raise your hand? And if you see somebody here, you can ask them kind of what's it all about, because they kind of know what to say and what not to say. But it's, it's, a, it's a pretty amazing retreat. So um, that's coming up in January. There's other things in the bulletin that... Um, are there for you, and let us have a word of prayer together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given to us. We come to you knowing, Lord, that our minds are full of a lot of different things, and we need your help to focus on why we're here today, to worship you. Thank you for the way that the praise band helps us to do that in the beginning, and then the announcements come in there and kind of mess it all up. But Lord, we just come today asking that you would speak to every heart that's here today. Help us to understand and to see things that we probably did not understand before we came today. But that when we leave today, that the most important thing we do understand, and that's God's salvation. That it's for everyone who will believe in his son, Jesus Christ. And so we thank you for the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins that uh, we so much need all the time. And so, Lord, we place in your hands all the people that are on our prayer list. And we know there's some that aren't on the prayer list that have things going on in their lives. And you know all about who they are and what they are. And uh, we just uh, lift them up before your throne of grace here this morning. Thank you for those that are joining us by Zoom and those that have had changes in their lives as well along the way that uh, they need your, your touch in their lives as well as those that are here today. And so we just uh, put in your hands all these things, Lord, because you are, you've got big shoulders and you're almighty God. And we're glad that we, we can be here today to listen, to receive what you have for us, and to serve you from here on this week. And so we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we share this great hymn together. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is your help and salvation. Let all who hear now to His temple draw near, joining in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who are all things is wondrously reigning. And as on wings of an eagle, uplifting, sustaining. Have you not seen all that is needful has been sent by his gracious ordaining? Praise to the Lord, all that all that is in me adore Him. All that has life and breath come now with praises before Him. Let the Amen sound from His people again, gladly forever adore Him. You may be seated.
responsive reading today is entitled Rejoice in the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let them say among the nations, The Lord Lord reigns. reigns. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's Lord's right right hand hand has has done done mighty things. things. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You You are are my my God. God. And I will give you thanks. You You are are my God. God. And I will exalt you. I trust trust in in your your unfailing unfailing love. love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will will praise God's God's name in song and and glorify glorify him with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Just thought of today that when we were on the Great Wall of China, went way up on top of a mountain, there was no one around when I was up there, and I yelled out, Jesus is Lord, thinking that maybe no one's ever said that up there in a country that has never heard about Jesus Christ or especially that part of the world. I thought that was worth shouting. (laughs) And so that part of the country can never say they never heard about Jesus. Continue on. Praise man. Yes. I Speak Jesus has been a song we've been sharing together in this month. And so we'll share it again this this Sunday and then next Sunday. Um, And it brings to mind, again, just the speaking the name of Jesus. Uh, and how incredibly um, important it is for us to have that kind of a relationship. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Cause your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, when Jesus in the streets. 
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak a holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within his presence. I speak Jesus. Praise band may be excused from the platform. I invite the rest of you to stand. If you're able to stand, if you don't, that's fine. As you hear the message, it comes from the very last book of the Old Testament. Do you know the name of that book? Malachi. I had a confirmation kid. <laughs> We're going through the books of the Bible. And I said, okay, now you read these book titles. And, and he comes up to Malachi. And I'm going like, I've never heard of that one before. I started laughing like crazy. I go like, no, it's Malachi. It's Malachi chapter 3, verses 13 through 18 today. And it says this. You have said harsh things against me, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? You have said it is futile to serve God. What did we gain by carrying out his requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty. But now we call the, the arrogant blessed. Certainly the evildoers prosper, and even those who challenge God es escape. Then those who fear the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. They will be mine, says the Lord Almighty, in the day when I make up my treasured possession. When I yeah, make up my treasured possession, I will spare them. Just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. Amen. That's the word today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. May it speak to our hearts here this morning. And I just pray that you help me as I preach your word, that it will be done with a, a conviction. It's one that I truly believe every word that is said here, that it's yours, it reflects you, it, it points to you, and it even points to Jesus even though it comes from the last book of the Old Testament. And so, Lord, I just pray for everyone that is here today, those that are watching by Zoom, that we will listen and we'll hear the voice of you, Lord, that we will fear you and that we will honor your name in our lives as well. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. At a Veterans Day program this past week, and I do want to thank all the veterans that are here today that have served the Lord, have served our country. Um, there was a couple of letters read at the Spirit Lake Auditorium where they had a special 
Veterans Day program. And it was a Air Force general from this area who's now retired who gave the message, gave the little speech on uh, Veterans Day. And so he read a couple of letters from soldiers who wrote back home to their loved ones while they were in the military. The first one was about a GI. Do you know what GI means? Government issue. I was that at one time. Which means if you are government issue, you give up all your rights. You are not from the state you're from. You, you, know, you forget about all that stuff. You become now Uncle Sam's puppet. Call it that way. You follow Uncle Sam and what he says. You follow the President of the United States, whoever that may be, and he is the Commander-in-Chief. And as in the military, you listen to the Commander-in-Chief. All rights you have are gone. You will listen, you will obey the government of the United States. I didn't realize that all went into being a soldier. But that's what they call you, GI. Hey, GI. Government issue. But anyway, the first... Uh, letter that he read was from someone who was serving overseas during wartime and he was talking about all the things that he missed back home and those of you that have been serving in the military you know what that's like you miss the home cooked food that was always kind of taken for granted and the food you got in the military did not taste like mom's you know I was a picky eater I learned in basic training that if you don't eat, it's a long time until the next meal. And you started eating everything that you would not have eaten back home. And, it was, and you didn't talk. You ate fast and you got out of there fast, otherwise you'd be on KP, which would mean keep peeling potatoes, you know, <laughs> kind of a thing. So um, he was talking about how he missed the family, the holiday get-togethers with family, hanging out with the neighbors and his friends. And uh, we talked about his plans about coming back home and what he intends to do once he got out of the service. The second letter was written from a guy that was a pilot, a fighter pilot in Vietnam. And his letter was pretty much the same as the one I just uh, mentioned what was in there, except that uh, he had a girlfriend. And he wanted to tell her that when he got back, he would, get, he would like to get He'd like to marry her and find a job and to settle down and to start a family. It was the last letter that he wrote. It was his last mission of flying into Vietnam. And his plane was shot down and that was the end of his life. He never did make it back home in the way that the other guy who wrote his loved ones did. So you either come home when you serve overseas, you either come home different than when you left, you could come home wounded, you can come back with scars on your mental capacities, and you can also come home in a box, in a coffin that's flag draped. They serve our country's freedoms. And I served at a time when America was looked, up, looked at as a, a country that was good. And no matter where you went, you were, you were somewhat respected as you walked around in your uniform or people could tell that you were in the service because you were the only one that had a haircut that was military style. And so people could tell that you were an American and that you served in the military. We have something like this taking place here in Malachi. It talks about a scroll of remembrance. Not a, I just said a letter of remembrance. That's the title of this message today. One that you read, that uh, you hear about, of people who still feared God and honored his name. There was just a small group of people like this at the time. A little bit of a background of this is that um, the people of Israel have been in Jerusalem for a little over 100 years. Prior to this, 
they were uh, part of the group where the Babylonians destroyed uh, Jerusalem in 586 B.C. And the survivors were hauled or were taken captive to the Babylonian Empire's headquarters, which would be modern-day Iraq and Iran. Over time, they were, I think Zerubbabel was one of the guys that was a, was a Jew that asked King Cyrus if he could go back and uh, rebuild the temple back in Jerusalem for his people. And Cyrus allowed him to do that. So there was different groups that left the Babylonian Empire to go back to Jerusalem, different groups of Jews. And the first thing they wanted to do was to you know, reconstruct the walls of the old city because everything was demolished. They went back to nothing. And they wanted to rebuild the temple, which was nothing at all like the first temple. And so as, so they, that took place, and then now at this time in Malachi, it's about a hundred years since that's all been done. A hundred years, that's not very long. That's probably, you know, in our day it's, you know, like three generations, four generations of people. But the faith that the people had in the living God that they followed over a hundred years had become very lost. Many of the people did not fear God's name anymore, did not honor him at all. But there's always a small group of people that got together and they talked about the fear of the Lord and they had that relationship with God and they started writing down a, a, a scroll of re remembrance and the, it said the presence of the Lord was there when they did this and how, how much that the Lord must have just enjoyed being able to listen in to those, to those people, which wasn't very many of them, of remembering the God that they love, the God that they serve and even when the rest of the people didn't care about him, they did. Could that happen here in Milford, Iowa? Yes, it can happen. Take a lot of things for granted. Say like, I don't need God. I've, I've kind of worked hard my whole life. Um, I'm retired now, I got whatever I needed. I don't really need God anymore. I don't need the church anymore. I'm just gonna go live my life any way I want to and no one's gonna tell me different. That can be an attitude that comes upon a group of people, no matter where you live in the world today, can be like that. It happened to Israel. And uh, Malachi addresses, 100 years later, kind of at the end here, in 400 BC, somewhere in there, he addresses the spiritual condition of the people of Israel of the nation of Israel. And this is what he comes up with. He starts with the religious leaders, the, the priests that were there to serve the people and to serve God. They were kind of the in-betweeners of the people and of God. And Moses had pointed out to them that there is a certain thing on, on how to function as a priest. That when he would sacrifice for the people, there had to be a spirit people had to come with a sacrifice that was a special sacrifice. If they could afford it, it would be a lamb. And it had to be a lamb that was perfect. It could never have had a broken leg. It could never have had a disease. It had to have both eyes I could see. Uh, and it had to be like one years old. And if they couldn't afford a lamb, they would probably get a dove, a pigeon. But it had to be a perfect kind of a pigeon and a perfect dove as well for those that didn't have the money to, to buy a lamb. But Malachi starts out by saying the priests forgot about really who they were serving and it didn't matter to them. It can be like pastors today. You can say anything you want, let anything go what you want, and not serve God at all. It may look like you are, but you're probably not following his word. And so... The priest did not honor or fear God's name. That's kind of where he starts. That was all thrown out. The priests were in charge. 
And they sacrifice blind animals, crippled animals, diseased animals, which was always forbidden. And then they allowed their own people to intermarry with people on the countries around them. And that was the beginning of idolatry coming into Israel that God had warned them about as well. You know, there are consequences to decisions that one makes in life. And so Malachi is really pointing out some of these things that, you know, all, all along they wanted to have a king like all the other nations around them. Remember that? And so God says, hey, you don't really want to have a king because they're, they're, not, they're not seeing that God is the one that's been taking care of them over the centuries. That they just said, we insist, we want a king. And God says, well, if you have a king, then you're going to have to pay taxes and take, you know, you're going to have to put up with a lot of different things. And the people didn't listen to him, but said, we want a king to be, like all the, to be like all the other nations around us. And so who did they choose? Remember, a guy by the name of Saul. What was it about Saul that they, why did they choose him over anybody else? Yeah, he was an NBA player, you know? He was tall. He was a head taller than everybody else. And they said, well, our king of Israel is going to be someone that is going to stand out and he's probably a muscular kind of a guy. But, you know, Saul never really wanted to be king. And he turned out to be a bad king. It was a bad choice. Who followed Saul? David. What kind of a guy was David? He was a son of Jesse. He was the one who was a sheep herder, and uh, he was kind of like uh, a runt out of the whole family. And that's the one that God says, I'm going to use David to be the next king that he was. And he was the best king that Israel's ever had. So God can use us sometimes when we don't think we can be used. Can anything good come from Milford or, or where are you all from? Can anything, anything good come from wherever you were born and raised? With God, yes. Anything's possible with God. So the people have become insensitive towards God and God says to them that you have said many harsh things against me over time. What are those harsh things that we could be said about God? Just that he doesn't exist? I'm going to live my life any way I want to? To be just self-sufficient? It could be a lot of things. What happens when a church becomes complacent and comfortable towards God? The same things we see here. Don't, you don't ever want to become complacent and comfortable because I don't want to be a part of a church that's complacent and comfortable. We're here to serve. We're here to get dirty. We're here to do things that we sometimes don't want to do. But we do it out of a heart that's, that, that we know that God has changed our hearts and we want to serve him. We show our love to him and to our neighbor because he lives in us. Some of the attitudes that can happen over time is that, uh, you know, I don't care what the church does. You know, that's why we hired a pastor. He should do it. You know? It can be an attitude that people have. I don't, I don't let the church do what it wants to do. I don't care what it does. I'll probably go whatever it is and put, give them something along the way. But I really don't care what happens in the church. You can become discontent. There can be a lot of discontentment. And you know what that means? If there's a lot of discontentment, there can be a lot of crabby, complaining people. But there are times when we know that people are moving away from God, we need to say something, as many of you have, along the way. 
wasn't an easy thing to do. But something that you stood your ground of saying, you know, this is what God's word says. This is where we need to be. Following him. And you may be the minority. But God is used to being the minority with a lot of people over the centuries. He still uses people in small groups. People who love him and care about who he is and what he wants in life. If you're discontent, you can also become then critical. It's kind of the, the thing that happens. When, you, when you're discontent, you're not satisfied. And so therefore, then you start looking at, well, I want to look for a church where I can gain something. You know, and we live in a time where it's, it's like church smorgasbord. You go to a smorgasbord and you pick only what you like. And it's um, something that can take place today as well. So there's a lot, of, a lot of complaining that takes place because it's very self-serving. It's not what, how can I serve in the church and serve his word and be obedient to his word. It's what can I give to help the church. A lot of times it's what can I get? What can I get? And if you're here today and you, there's something that you want to get from Harbor of Joy, bye-bye. We're not about getting. We're about giving and what we can give to the Lord and praise his name, even when it's difficult, even when it's hard. So I hope you'll want to be a part of that, uh, of who we are. In all that takes place here in Malachi, as the people neglected the tithing to God, it's, it talks about being to rob God. God has blessed you with what you have been given. Everything that we have comes from him. We just give back what we can. And God doesn't expect everything. You know, Old Testament, he's 10%. In the New Testament, it's however you feel you're blessed, you give that way. It can be more than 10%. You give as you are blessed, that's how you give. Because everything comes from God. And that might be a whole new concept for some of you here today. You've never had that perception. But it's true. You give out of a loving heart what God, how God has loved you and blessed you. And uh, if every church did that, you would never ever hear a thing about finances. And we don't, we don't hear about finances here anyway. <laughs> we, just, we just trust God as we go along. And God's always provided. The people here have no idea what they've done against God. They thought what they were doing was okay, it was fine. But God points out that, hey, no, it's not all fine. You may think so, but you're doing some things, saying things that are not good. They see no benefit in believing or serving God. It's kind of like, who, you know, who, who cares about God? They're arrogant. And those who are arrogant, now all of a sudden these people that are prideful are looked upon as being good people. People who lie and who cheat, it looks like they're prospering all the time. And nothing seems to happen to the ungodly. How many times have you said in your life where you go like, you know, when you hear of someone who's died, man, they were good people. They, they went to church. They, uh, they were good neighbors. They were, everything about them was just good, good, good. And yet we know of people that do everything, it's like they don't care about anything. They don't, they don't go to church. They, they go out and get drunk all the time. They're smoking pot. They're on drugs. On and on it goes, and those, it seems like nothing happens to them. They never get cancer. Why is it only the good people that seem to get the cancer? I don't know. But you get to the point where you get a little bit skeptical, skeptical about life. And it seems like the bad people are the ones who make out good, and the people who are really serving the Lord come up on the dirty end of the stick. Have you ever had thoughts like that? I visited with a number of people when I was a chaplain with hospice. 
lot of them, a lot of, lot of folks just felt like, you know, why me? Why me? I've been a good person. I've done a lot of good things. And why this roommate of mine or the person across the hall or somebody there, they've never, never served God in their life. They could care less about God. They curse him. They cuss him out. And nothing seems to happen to them. Well, there's a group of people who do honor God's name, who have a real respect for him. And it's here where we find in our text, it's, it's verse number um, 17. It's a great verse. In light of all that's going on, the ones who love the Lord and respect him and are writing down what they remember about how good God is. He calls them treasured possessions. These are the jewels. They're very important to God. And even though all these people are doing these things, God says, I look at all of them as jewels. They're all jewels. If they would come and repent of their sin and just trust in me. That's what's very important. We walk by faith, not by sight. And so we see Jesus in all of this. It says, The day will come when God will separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep are the ones that go to which side? When you're separated. Sheep go to the right. The goats will go to the left. There will be a separation that takes place. There will be a judgment And God knows every heart. He knows if you're a a sheep here today, he knows if you're a goat. He knows that if the judgment took place today, he knows exactly which side he'd be able to have you go. It reminds us of what Jesus says in Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23. Jesus says this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on on that day, and it's referring to that day as the judgment day, when the world will come to an end. Judgment will be given. Truth and righteousness will come out. On that day... People will say, many of them will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons? Didn't we perform many miracles? And he says, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Those are terrible words to be given. But everyone has had a chance Everyone has been welcome to come and to believe in Jesus Christ as his or her personal Savior. And we become God's treasured possessions whenever our hearts honor him and love him. And we honor him and we love him when we repent, we humble ourselves. And we say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. I've messed up. I'm a wreck. I'm a wretch. And God will receive us and forgive us. That's the good news. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it would be so much easier to talk about the good things that you give and want to give to us. But there are times, Lord, where we need to be reminded of who we really are. If it wouldn't be for Jesus, we would never seek you. We would want to do our own things. We would remain selfish. But with Jesus, with his power, the songs we've sung about here today, this morning, and worshiping him, that he is the way maker. 
He provides and makes the way for us. He gives us the power to have a new life and to do things we never could do ourselves because we become your prized possession. We're your jewels. And so, Lord, you want to make jewels that are here today. If there's some that are here, some lives that are here today that don't know Jesus Christ. We're just hard-hearted people against you. But you can make hard hearts into hearts of flesh. You can make just simple rocks into precious gems and stones because of your son, Jesus Christ, whom we believe in and whom we look to and we serve. So Lord, if someone is here today, we just need to come and say this prayer in humility, not out of pride, but humility. Lord, I'm sorry for not wanting to follow you. I'm sorry for not thinking about you. I'm sorry for just playing life as it comes. I love my family. I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my kids. But Lord, I still, when I look at where I'm at today, it's, there's, you're not in it. You're not in it. I want you to be. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Come into my life. Show me that there is another way that only comes through by believing in Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for what you're going to be doing in my life. And I just give you all the praise and all the glory. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. If you're able to, please rise as we recite the Apostles' Creed together today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I was good. Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and suffered and He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Receive the benediction before you're seated. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of my own I claim, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other
the ground is sinking too. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging place. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ a solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet call, oh, may I then in him be found, clothed in his righteousness alone, redeemed to stand upon the throne. On Christ a solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>